Hi, welcome to the lecture of lightweight cryptography. And in this lecture, we're going to cover uh, the definition of lightweight cryptography. We're going to mention a standard for that. And most importantly, we're going to discuss example of lightweight symmetric uh, cryptography, the Simon Cipher. Some of the references that I've used here in my lecture. So what is lightweight cryptography? Well, first of all, let's start with the beginning of the story. Conventional cryptography, right? Like the one we covered in our course, the DES, AES, RSA, Algamal, ACC, SHA algorithms. These are conventional uh, cryptographic techniques uh, that are good, but they require extensive computations as we have seen uh, throughout the discussion of our course. Lightweight cryptography is really uh, try to address the need uh, for cryptographic solutions that are suitable for resource constrained devices. Now, we, we throw now here a word of resource constrained devices, so let's define what a resource constrained device. A resource constrained device has limited uh, resources, has limited computation power, has limited memory size, has limited area, limited power, limited energy. Rough examples of that, uh, the, the what you see in embedded systems, right? And the sensors, uh, uh, RFID devices, these are considered to be lightweight devices. And the, I'm sorry, uh, resource constrained devices, and they require lightweight cryptography. Therefore, we could we can we can see that in these tiny devices, they, uh, they we we have a security challenge here. In one end uh, of the spectrum, using conventional cryptography on 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 a tiny device, resource resource constrained device, significantly stresses the resources of this device. Well, you can think of not implementing anything. Uh, in terms of cryptographic uh, algorithms, and that would be wrong choice also. So using the conventional methods or not using any security uh, measurements, both are not appropriate. And this is why lightweight cryptography here provides the security resource balance. It provides simpler solutions and algorithms to secure the data, but at the same time, it has uh, uh, less uh, burden on the device resources. Um, it's important that we we have to mention some of the this uh, uh, performance metric and, and 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 resources and define them more. So performance metrics are used to quantify the design overall quality, for example, frequency, power, dissip uh, power dissipation, area, energy, etc. And the resources are the supply or the stock of, of processing energy and memory uh, assets that are that are with this device. So there is typically a trade off. If you need more performance, you would require more resources. Uh, for instance, higher speed, you would you would need uh, more area, uh, more power, more energy, etc. So the implementation of uh, 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 implementation performance and security requires really more of the resources uh, uh, of the device, and they tend to consume the resources. And if you have a limited computation power on on this device, you might slow the device down. So. One of those, uh, some of those metrics here that you hear, uh, the, 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 that you hear in the, uh, the the hardware and the software implementation, something like the area, the computation power, the code size. For instance, code size is important for for software algorithms because this is where you need uh, 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 the, the, the the required memory size to store the code and the constants. So, a sophisticated conventional algorithm, with when it requires large uh, memory size for 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 the for the code and the constants, might not be appropriate for tiny sensor. 
Okay, RAM size also another th thing that that people code uh, for uh, for for software algorithms uh, or or algorithms targeting for software implementation. And typically, memory sizes are used to store data and intermediate states. Power important and energy and throughput and latency all are important for software and hardware implementations. So these are the key metrics that typically we we look at designs and we make sure that these key metrics are appropriate when we pick the solution and we pick the 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 the, the algorithm so here for instance uh, you will see that uh, in terms of uh, uh, so, uh, the, the, the resources uh, for constrained uh, for resource constrained devices you see that the comp computation power typically for these devices is 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 very uh, 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 tiny or smaller compared with uh, uh, let's say a, a, a server or a laptop. Typically, you talk about 4-bit, 8-bit, 16-bit, and sometimes 32-bit. Examples for these uh, will be, uh, for these numbers, you can see them in the PIC microcontroller. The RAM size sometimes fr range from 64 to 100 K bytes. Uh, these are the typical devices where you can see these sizes. The, 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 the flash, the ROM, of course, the ROM uh, typically used to store constants and code. Um, in the K bytes, these are typical devices which 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 has these numbers. Energy and power, uh, very tiny. They don't have that. Uh, you can you can check out these RFID and you will see that these these numbers are, are in the range of these uh, 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 devices. Uh, and uh, for uh, if you if we implement them in uh, these solution in an ASIC and FPGA implementation, they typically um, these devices um, they, they they have limited number of gates or devices because the 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 resource constrained device by definition has limited number of transistors. So these numbers kind of give me what is a resource constrained device and these are examples of such devices now resource constraints and applications you can see for example if we are dealing with 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 rfid device right and and, and this application circuit downsizing is an important factor for rfid uh, because they are they, they are tiny devices energy is, a, is 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 an important metric um, for resource constrained energy because uh, these devices typically are battery powered and um, some of those uh, are medical devices that are implanted in human body some of those are uh, uh, placed in a remote area so so we have to be uh, in these applications very careful of the energy consumption uh, other examples, for example, uh, memory size. Um, uh, so CPU are used for a variety of devices, including electrical, home appliances, sensors, and, and vehicles. So these are typically their 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 their, their uh, memory requirement uh, are are not as um, or uh, they, they cannot uh, have a, 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 as as large of uh, memory sizes as we uh, those numbers that we see in servers and laptops so they typically those the, they have smaller memory sizes now because these resource constrained devices um, are smaller then what we need to do is that we know we need to change the conventional uh, 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 block ciphers to more of lightweight block ciphers. Now, uh, here you can you have to understand that in 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 lightweight cryptography, we have lightweight cryptography for symmetric uh, 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 encryption, lightweight cryptography for asymmetric encryption, and lightweight cryptography for hash functions, and. Now we're going to just focus on this uh, uh, on block ciphers that are symmetric encryption. All right. So how we can compare the lightweight block ciphers and the conventional block ciphers so that we can understand where can we apply this lightweightness. So if you look at the block size, 
typically for lightweight black cipher, it is a smaller compared with a conventional uh, uh, black, black cipher. So what do we mean by smaller? We're talking about 64 bit, 80 bit, okay? Key sizes in lightweight block cipher are smaller, typically uh, uh, less than 96 bits. Um, simpler round function, okay, in lightweight block ciphers compared to conventional block ciphers, okay, uh, they are smaller in the sense we use a smaller S boxes, smaller number of uh, of of of, of uh, nonlinear functions, but uh, some of them because because they really implement very simple uh, function RAM function, they tend to increase the uh, number of iterations in these lightweight cipher. Simpler key schedules. Um, some some of the uh, lightweight ciphers, what they do for key scheduling is that they schedule them in the fly, that that would reduce the memory usage. Okay, we don't have we don't need to have um, uh, 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 memory to to store these subkeys. Uh, so and 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 another thing is the minimal implementation. Uh, we uh, typically these these algorithms that are lightweight cipher, they have various implementations, uh, which provide different levels of security, and you would want to pick one of those configurations and implement them. Now, don't implement all of them because this is really counterintuitive, and, and, and you defeat the whole purpose of having these as lightweight ciphers. You don't implement all the config, config, configurations. You implement the configuration that suits the security level that, that you seek, and that will provide for you a very lightweight implementation. Now, see if we go back here. Oops, did I skip something? Right. So here's the standard for lightweight cryptography. And um, um, so, so we have uh, symmetric ciphers, asymmetric ciphers, and 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 this standard, the uh, standard, and these are there are examples uh, uh, that that are that are provided for for you here for lightweight ciphers. For example, uh, block ciphers, you have uh, present Cliffia uh, and and Simon and Spec. Uh, asymmetric ciphers, uh, crypto GPS, uh, AI like uh, ID based and Oh boy, the, the lightweight el elliptic curve cryptography techniques are just plenty. Hash function, photon, spongent, uh, uh, and uh, Lazamta, uh, LW, and um, the list the, the list just goes on and on and on, and just, just a small samples of what can be seen in the in the literature. What we'll do is that we're going to focus. In the rest of this lecture on Simon and Speck as an example of lightweight cryptography, which uh, uh, which is which is uh, uh, which implements uh, uh, symmetric encryption. Now, Speck and Simon ciphers. So, <coughs> excuse me. So we will we will discuss examples of lightweight cipher, which in this case is Simon. And Simon and Spec, um, they are actually cousins, were proposed in, uh, in, in back in 2013 as lightweight symmetric block ciphers. Simon and Spec each, um, uh, each have multiple supporting block sizes, right? And we will talk about those block sizes. Actually, they are here. So you have, these are the, the supported block sizes, which, which tells you we have different configurations. And uh, we will have a, a more, more detailed table, but you can see uh, this block size, this key size, block size, key size, block size, key size, okay? And when you have multiple key sizes, of course, you will pick one. Um, it, 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 the, 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 those who designs, the folks who designs the spec, designed uh, 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 spec to be more friendly with software and Simon more friendly with hardware. But both are very similar. Okay. Now, so Spec and Simon 
they, they, they apply this basic design principle for design choices, simplicity. That's why they are lightweight. They support simple operations, friendly for software or hardware, okay, and especially in the round function and in the key scheduling, uh, XORs, AND, ORs, NOTs, etc. They avoid complex structure, okay? Uh, use simple functions, the no S boxes, no substitution and permutation. They, 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 they are based on Feistel uh, permutation and network, uh, Feistel network, and it provides a good balance between linear diffusion and nonlinear confusion operations. Uh, Simon and Spec are similar, but for, smi for, for Simon, nonlinearity function is implemented, which in the round function, uh, is the composition of two rotations and bitwise, uh, by, uh, by, bit, uh, I'm sorry, and a bitwise and, right, which is more friendly with hardware. On the other hand, the spec uh, cipher uses modular addition, which is more friendly with software. Okay, so you can see both are very similar, but Simon is more towards hardware and spec is more towards software. We'll talk about Simon for the rest of this uh, lecture. So Simon uses these operations. We'll keep this table with us uh, uh, so that we remind uh, ourselves what they are, but we will explain them in the block diagram. It has several uh, configuration. It has uh, Feistel structure, as we mentioned, consists of uh, rounds, and we'll see uh, how we compute the subkeys. So here is he or here are the configurations for Simon. OK, so different configuration configurations. How many? Ten. The more you go down here, the more security. OK, now we can see that here um, for the block size, you can start with the 32 bit block size of data. And in this configuration, you have a key size of 64. You have a choice of 64 bit. And you can see that uh, the key size consists of multiplying by the word, which is typically half of the block size. OK, so you have the block size 32 and the word will become 16 bit. And in this case, your key size is 4 times 16. That is equals 64. Some notations that the Simon use. And we have a constant here. We have a bunch of constants that these, these configuration could use. Um, they are referred to as Z0 all the way to Z4. And these are pre-computed constants by the algorithm developers. How many rounds? 32 rounds. You can choose an, another configuration as you go down. As I said, the more security here. So as a designer of a tiny device like RFID, which one I would I would use? Well, uh, you, you really ha need to do a, a little bit of a quick feasibility study, right, before on desi designing any one of those. So you might want to have a, uh, um, a hardware implementation of one or two or three of those, uh, maybe the one on the top, one on the bar, uh, in the middle, one at the, the, the bottom. Do a quick hardware implementation. Look at the sizes, the speed. Take 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 uh, uh, computations for uh, for power and energy, and then you see what suits you. What 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 can this device uh, 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 handle in terms of uh, overhead? Uh, uh, by, by, by implementing uh, each of these configurations. Of course, if you go down more in these configurations, it is be better for security. But let's just suppose if I implemented configuration 10, which is the more secure here, um, then I would require more devices than my RFID could handle. Then I'll, I'll move up in the uh, in the in the in the configuration uh, in the security configuration list. So. The, the 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 variations here provide flexibility. So flexibility with a resource constrained device, one size fits all does not work. Okay, so don't go implement a one implementation. I have seen this in the literature that people sometimes they implement multiple configurations for these lightweight, which kind of defeat the purpose. Well, see, the, the, the reason you have you have different configurations here, not for you to go and implement all of them. No, it is really for you to choose on one and implement that one only, right? Because implementing a bunch of them 
but you you will you will create a more complicated hardware. Probably at the end, if I would to implement those ten, might as well just pick AES and 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 make it very simple for for myself, right? Which is which is in both cases I'm wrong. Implementing all of these configurations in one hardware is wrong. Picking AES for a tiny device is wrong as well. Just pick the configuration which suits your resources. Okay. Now we're going to discuss configuration one here and the rest of the slides just to show you how simple this 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 uh, uh, algorithm is. So the block size is 32 bit. Okay, we're going to split it since it's Feistel. We're going to we're going to have two two, two halves, one half uh, or two words, one word 16 bit on the right and uh, and 16 bit on the left, and the key and the key size will be 64. OK, so four times 16, that is 64. The word 16 bit and number of the words 16 times four uh, equals 64. So these are number of the words in the key. Constants ZZ is, is Z0 or, or uh, Z note. Uh, and then, <laughs> excuse me, number of rounds, 32 round. And you can see we picked up all these numbers from this table from right here. OK. Now, so here is the algorithm. Uh, five cell structure. We have seen this before with the DES algorithm. Okay, two halves, right? The data comes to this round. This is the round function. Very simple, very simple. Okay, done. You go to the next round, right? So what are the inputs? The data coming from the previous round or your original data. You split them 16 bit here, 16 bit here, okay? So what do we do? We take the left data and we send it to the right. Then we take the right data and we process it, right, with some of the uh, partial results that, that 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 we are having here from 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 processing the left data. We do some XORing and then we send it to the left. See here, the left goes to the right immediately. But the, the but the left of the of the of the new stage here or, or the output of, of the round has to go through this computation. And this computation is simple. So what do we do here? This is this is here a uh, rotation of one bit to the right to the left, sorry. And this is a rotation of uh, uh, let's say right here, rotation, left rotation by eight bits. So we take this data, which is the 16 bit. We rotate it left by one bit position. We rotate it left by uh, uh, eight positions. We and bitwise, right? Then we XOR the 16 bit with the 16 bit coming from the right side. Now, then we take the left data. We are not done yet. We rotate it left by two positions. Then we XOR it with the output that uh, we just came from XORing uh, the output of the and and the output of the uh, the the right word. We XOR, we XOR that. Then we XOR the result with the sub key. And we did not talk. This is an input to this round. So this round it has an input, right? This is a sub key. So we are assuming that we are in round i, right? So this will be key i, the sub key i. Once we XOR it, we send it to the uh, to the right word of the result of this round. So this is this entire this here is one round. Very simple, very easy, gentle on the hardware, so nothing that is sophisticated or complicated. Now, how many rounds is this algorithm? 32 rounds. Why? Because we picked up a configuration of 32 rounds. Okay? Now, notice that here the subkey is 16 bit. So let's see if we can find how we generate the subkey. So let's. So this is the way we generate the subkey. So initially, these subkeys are loaded here, right? Notice that every one of those is 16 bit. These are four 16 bit, 64 bit of a subkey, uh, 64 uh, bit uh, total of the key. Now, here's what what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the most significant word here, shift it to the right by three bits, right? XOR it with the 
um, this uh, uh, word here, which is the second least significant word. Then take the output and XOR it with the least significant word. All right. Then the output from here, we're going to shift it to the right by one bit position and XOR it with the output coming from here as such. We're going to take this output here and XOR it with this partial result here, which is the XOR of a constant C and Z. In our in, in, in my configuration, here it, it says J here, but in our case, it, it should be Z0 because we picked up a configuration where this is Z0. Just notice here the S here minus three means right rotation because in the original in the original round function, right? Oops, sorry, I went to the other. Here, th there is no minus here. This is to indicate left rotation. Okay. All right. Okay. So, so this is this is how I generate. Once I do all of that, I can generate a sixteen bit, right? Sub key for round i. All right. So let's see the constants here. What what is this? How I generate this? So the C here is. Um, Let's see. Um, OK, so the C here is uh, what it is. It's a it's a uh, it's a all ones. OK, so it is a string of all ones with the la or least significant bits being zeros. OK, this, for example, like this. Right. So all ones, the least two significant bits are zeros. That's what the C constant here for the Z. J in our configuration, we, uh, the, 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 the configuration tells me to pick Z0, and these are pre computed constants. And this is the value of these constants given by the algorithm developers. So we, 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 we XOR those and we XOR it from the result here so that we can push it right to this kind of uh, uh, circular so because the, the now now once i compute this the, then k i plus 3 becomes k i plus 1 uh, plus 2 and k i plus 2 becomes k i plus 1 and then k i uh, i becomes my output here and then i repeat uh, the same process for the second round to generate the, the next so this is the sub key that goes to the round okay Every one of those is 16 bits, and this is my output of the key scheduling. If you look at the diagram, if you look at the diagram, uh, here, the, the sub key that comes in here is 16 bits because this, uh, this right word here, which is input to the round, is 16 bits, 16 bits, 16. So it is bit XORed with a 16 bit. That's why the sub key is 16 bit. Now, this is intermediate result of the Simon uh, 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 cipher uh, giving these data. All right. So we will try to execute the first round here, which is which is presented in this slide. So what do we do here? We start with this with the uh, with this result, right? And then what we want, we want to execute round zero, and then prepare ourselves. To, to round one and and I'll, I'll leave round one for you, but well, let's see what we have in terms of round zero. Given the examples that we have here, which is this is the, the this data and this key, if you do the key scheduling correctly, this is the sub key for this round. And this is this is the right half or the right word, and this is the left word, right? We'll take this left word and send it to the right word of the output and we'll take the left the right word here and then we will XOR it with these results that are coming here which is basically take the left word rotate it left by one position take the left word rotate it left by eight positions and these two and you get this result we will XOR it with the right word and then We'll XOR it with the result of rotating the left word by two positions, all right? And then the output is XORed with the sub key. Once we XOR this and we've computed, we send it to the left word, which is 
the output of this round. So this is my round function. This is my round zero. These are the inputs of round zero in terms of data. This is the input of round zero in terms of sub key. And this is the output of round zero, which will go to round one. OK, after I executed the round function. Now it is clear from the Simon cipher that this algorithm, right, um, is simple in terms of functionality, is simple in terms of of uh, key scheduling, okay? And we're gonna repeat the, the round function 32 times. Very simple algorithm, which is suited for uh, tiny resource constrained devices. And this is the whole point of lightweight cryptography. You want to balance the need to secure data and the need to have uh, 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 minimal burden on the uh, resources of the tiny devices. OK, all right. With that, I conclude this lecture of lightweight cryptography, and I hopefully uh, we went over all what we want to discuss and presented to you. Thank you very much for your listening and uh, good luck to all of you.